Hello and welcome back to SML Total Access. I'm Primetime Triple Zero joined by Dan and Matt. What's going on, fellas? Not much. Excited for the divisional rounds. Got some real good fell action this weekend. Always a good weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I'm real excited for this episode, if you can imagine why. Yeah, let's start off and let's talk about why. First down, Matt was highly criticized by his top five, and he was right. He it sounded like he was right with how he ordered it. Dan felt shafted. Matt was right. Um, so I want Matt to talk about that. Dan obviously can talk about that. And then, <laughs> and then, and then prime and Q are heading for unbeaten seasons. Possibly. Maybe we can kind of lump that all into one. Uh, Matt, we'll, we'll start with you. Yeah. I mean, people think I'm biased, but I always tell it like it is. Um, there's no bias at any of my top fives. Um, I, I, I watch a lot of streams. I see what I see and I can see the future. Um, I felt like Dan was going to drop one. I certainly didn't expect it to Colt, but I knew it was coming. Um, and I was on a heater last week, guys. I, I picked I picked the Giants to winning. I think I was one of the few people that said that. I've got screenshots. I told you if TCU won against Michigan that the other game was the national title game. I've been on a heater. It's not always going to happen, but I'm patting myself on the shoulder. It's been a good week. Yeah. Um, as, as far as topic number two there, uh, topic number one is prime and Q heading for unbeaten seasons. Q definitely is a schedule is not all that impressive. I think Dom is his toughest game. Um, I know Meats played him tough, but he should beat Meats with Matt Corral. Um, and I and I look at your schedule and you know Prime. I think I mean you, we play. We've always played good games. Anything can happen there. Um, you, you've got you know Dump's going to want to beat you with the Colts with your own team. You know motivation is a factor. And you've got Monty again, who maybe he'll stay quiet this time and put up a fight. Um, I think Q is a lock. I, I think Prime's got a little bit of a tougher road, but I do think with your guys' teams and your quarterbacks, you both go undefeated. Dan. Now listen, listen, listen. We're not changing the, the whole premise of what the Mat 5 is. The Mat 5 is not no Shudamus, not predicting the future. It's telling us right now what's going on. And right now, last week, when we had the same conversation, Matt was wrong. It doesn't matter what happens after that because he's not predicting the future. He's telling us what's going on right now, and he was wrong. Now, look, he can be fully justified with however he wants to do it this week because there's evidence that I should not be on one of the top oh, yeah. spots, which I can live with. I can live with that. No, That's the consequence when you play a game. Colt wins. Hey, hats off to Colt. I that he won. I heard his kids were cheering for him. Hopefully he made his night a little bit better at home. Everything was good. That's good. Hey, congratulations to that. On the second part of that, Prime's definitely going to go undefeated. He has one of the easiest cupcake schedules I've ever seen in the SML. The only thing that's going to stop Prime is Prime himself getting just bored and, and, and focused on the wrong things. Q, on the other hand, I think Q is also a lock to go in, but not because his schedule is, is as light, but I think he's just really focused. I think for Blip, uh, Q was getting a lot of heat. It was really frustrating him. He wasn't handling it very well. He didn't really like all the smoke coming his way. Now he's got away from that. He can just play his game. He can focus on getting better. He is getting better. I think he's going to be a force. I think uh, the NFC needs to start uh, really getting worried about uh, Q going on a kind of a, a long run here because uh, I'm not sure if anyone can beat him. Yeah, for me, I look at Matt, what he had put together last week, and he was right. I know it hurts Dan's feelings a little bit, but the truth is that – he gave his top five teams, and then his list was justified. I mean, he's like, hey, look, I know that Dan's on beaten and, uh, at that point, but he's like, I, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not seeing it from him. I'm not seeing it from Dan. And sure enough, Dan went and lost. So it's, it's almost like, you know, he, he's, he's watching these games, and he's not just going off record. Like some guys will just go off record or off of one win, but he's actually watching games. And I think that goes to show that his, his lists are legit. Um, for me, yeah, I think I'm going to go unbeaten. I think Q's going to go unbeaten. But none of that matters, obviously, if if you don't meet the Super Bowl. You know, I went unbeaten season one. Um, I was going to probably go unbeaten again uh, last season pre-blip. Uh, so this is like my third go-round here with uh, with unbeaten talk uh, this cycle. And none of it matters unless if you win a title. And um, Good. I'm finally, finally glad that we're getting the old prime back. Now this BS, so I'm going to go undefeated. I'm going to beat all these other jabronis out in the in the regular season it's all about big boy season it, it I'm is glad you're finally well back, it is finally, but you're, you're back but if you go on beaten with a title it does it does something i mean it is nice to have i mean to, to have that 20 and 0 season i mean the only 20 are we, are we gonna are we gonna acknowledge the fact that 
As to the 20 no. and 0 season, or are we going to put an asterisk? That's an, he had, I counted one time, he had seven forced wins in the asterisk. Yeah, that doesn't okay. count. That doesn't I agree. Count. I agree. So, so the ne- first person to do 20 and 0 is actually the first one to do 20. I, I, I think so, honestly. I, I agree. I agree. Um, and that's not, I mean, fa- honestly, I think, you know, Faz was a, he was the best player in the league at that point. Uh, last, For sure. But yep. he also had a great team as well. I mean, that Panthers team was loaded. But you can't you can't say 20 – because he actually got some force wins against like QP. I mean, there were some really yeah. good guys he got some uh, force wins against. Oh, his his Lombardi is real because he had to go through a lot of good yeah. players. No, we're not taking that away from him. But yeah. I agree. The, the 20 no is has a little bit of a, of a, yeah, a asterisk, bit of asterisk in it. And I think the next person that does it does the real one. Yeah. Um. So let's move on. NFC East has been an interesting division. Obviously, Bomber took a super team. He's lost a couple games. Grams looks like he's playing well with the Cowboys. He's wheeling and dealing, making trades. Doink, I don't know how we feel about him. And obviously, a tiny, I don't know if he's tanking or if he just sucks. Um, Dan, what do you think? Yeah, I think this is a pretty fun division. Um, You know, we kind of maybe thought Bomber was going to kind of run away with it, or at least Bomber and Doink. And now Grams is uh, back a little bit. Seems to be a little bit more active in tra- in uh, in the chat and trade talks, which is good. Um, I really want to think about Doink, though. Like, what's going on with Doink? He's had this team before. He knows their strengths. Uh, he made an interesting decision by uh, not trading Payne away, and then he signs him to a huge deal and then talks about wanting to trade him right afterwards. So I'm, I'm not sure what his logic is going on with that. Uh, he still has a quarterback issue, which he had pre-blip, and he hasn't fixed it. And uh, we see uh, Doink with a good quarterback, and we see Doink with a bad quarterback. And I, I think that there's enough evidence right now that he needs that good quarterback. So uh, I think Doink's going to sh- keep struggling. I think third place is probably where he is and until he figures out that quarterback position. Uh, I don't expect him to do much. Yeah, you know, I like this division a lot. I'm happy that Grams is doing well. I've seen Grams a lot in chat. I don't think Grams' success directly correlates to that. He's not that kind of guy. But I think the league's better when Grams is doing well. Um, with Doink, it's interesting. I think keeping Payne's probably the right move. I think defensive line is extremely important. But speaking of defensive line, he's got four uh, four elite defensive linemen. I'm just going to say it. And he's 31st in rushing yards allowed. Ooh, so almost, almost dead last. His his yards allowed is 32nd. So he's got all these pass rushers with, with Chase Young and Sweat. And he's got Jonathan Allen who has inside stuff. How is he not able to stop anything? I don't understand it. Um, when I had the Chargers, I mean, I just my my, my ends were just cotton havoc, um, and bailing me out on the backside. But he's got some bad losses. He's got Fig. That, that loss to Fig is not a good one. I'm not saying Fig can't sneak up and get you, but Doink's in at least two leagues. He plays this game a lot. He he comes from the Spades school of Madden. He knows the game. Beans put in 600 hours. I know they chat. I'm a little concerned there. I think Bomber's going to be fine. He's going to he's going to get that team under his wing. It is a super team. I know he doesn't really like it, but he eventually will, um, especially once he starts drafting with all those picks. And then Tiny, that team's in a better spot than it was when Tiny had it, except he doesn't have the miracle wonder of Gannon. Maybe he's hoping lightning strikes twice. If he can get like a top five pick, maybe he gets something like that again. But I don't know what's going on with Tiny. Yeah, it's interesting for me when I look at this division. Starting, I'm just going to go in order of, of wins and losses here. And, and Bombers at four and two. I think he's going to win the division. Um at the end of the day, Bomber, great team. This is this is this is where you get your best out of Bombers when he has a really good team and his division doesn't have another elite player in it. It's going to come down to if Tiny's right or wrong about Bomber and, and how he is as a player. And we're going to find out because that NFC has Faz in it, has QP in it. Even QB is not a bad player. Um, so I mean that that conference is is tough. Um, Grams is. <laughs> Is he back? I don't know. I think he's more active. I think he's he's tr- making more trades than he has normally. Uh, I'm I'm seeing a more invested Grams, which is always good to see. Um, and he's one, and he's and you know what, Grams actually gives Bomber trouble. I, I this is he beat him just a few advances ago, and I've watched him beat him last. I think pre blip when Bomber was the Jets. So that's I don't think that's a fluke. Um, as for as for Doink being three and four. Um, here's the thing about Doink. He's a guy who maybe similar to some others, it can really be boosted by his team. And that's, that's not to say he's a bad player, but he can just really utilize great abilities. Like, like Faz does with a uh, gunslinger last cycle or meets does with an escape artist a few cycles ago. Um, Doink needs a quarterback with like that gunslinger and a big time number one receiver. 
Um, Doink is an awful trader. Uh, I know he thinks that's just a narrative and we do push narratives for fun sometimes, but he sucks at trading with people. Um, and, but what he's going to need to learn is how he can actually communicate and trade with people so he can take some pieces on this commander's team and turn it into a quarterback because he, he doesn't like how he's three and four. He needs, he needs a quarterback. So he's going to need to know at some point to make a trade. He's not always going to win every trade. He's going to have to give up some assets to be risky and make a deal. But I think he's a little too analytical. And I think that holds him back sometimes in his trades. I think he needs to drop that analyticalness at some point to make a deal that that's actually going to catapult him to success. Cause he is a good player and I think he can compete for a division title in that division. Um, yeah, and may, maybe if he maybe if he can't play defense with that line, maybe he just needs to break it up. I mean, yeah. you could probably get the same results out of a bunch of bums. Yeah. So maybe he does that and gets a quarterback. Yeah. yeah I don't know what his plan is. He needs he needs a quarterback. Uh, he needs that quarter. And Tiny, he was playing good. He I think he needs a strong arm quarterback and a big play receiver. And he's just losing a lot. I don't know if he's lost motivation. I don't know what the case is, but this isn't the Tiny we've seen. I know he made fun of Polly for tanking. I don't know if we're on a tiny tank watch or not, but something to keep an eye on. Uh, disappointing to see this regression from Tiny Titan because, honestly, I expected more from Tiny after calling out Bomber. But, hey, alas, that, that is the NFC East right now. Um, let's move on. Third down, EA put out a email, a shocking email in my opinion, and I know there's some people that were a little down on it, but it's more than I ever thought they would ever do. It's one is they announced that they're going to do a commissioner toolkit, which I think is we're going to talk about what that is. And two, everybody who's impacted by the franchise glitch gets 50% off the next game and the beta early. Uh, I think that's more than EA has ever done. They put their money where their mouth is. I mean, you could do the math. 32 guys in the SML, 40 bucks each, 35, 40 bucks each. That's a lot of money. That's you know, and you do that in multiple leagues. So I, I like what EA's doing here. I'm intrigued by this commissioner toolkit. Uh, Dan, what do you, th or, uh, yeah, Dan, what do you think about this toolkit? Well, first of all, if I, I'm not sure if I trust EA uh, when it comes to uh, what will actually happen. I wonder if they're only going to do it for the commissioner of each league and not the 32. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I have a little, little faith in what EA will actually do. Mm -hmm. As far as dreaming and, and hoping what a commissioner tool could be, there, there's two of them that, I think would be uh, maybe three that would be the best things possible. One, uh, I would love a commissioner to, to be able to have um, full access to be able to reverse kind of game situations, game games uh, scores or, or reset them. Uh, you know, something happens in a game, someone cheats and, and it's obvious and they win or uh, something happened and, and it was an error. Uh, I would love for a, a commissioner to be able to kind of reset that score or, or be able basically erase it. I'd also love the commissioner to be able to uh, get or be able to push trades through. So I don't know how many times we've had situations where guys aren't on the same time or someone doesn't follow through or something happens and, and a commissioner can, can just kind of push that through. Uh, those would be two of them that I think could be pretty easily done um, right off the bat. But but I don't I don't know. I don't really have too much faith. Uh, kind of down on EA right now. So uh, that's the best that I think I could come up with what, what I think they could do. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I think what they did is is nice. I mean, they're giving us half off. I think they should have given us half off Madden 23 and refunded us half or gave us the option for Madden 24 because you're basically saying, hey, sorry, our product is basically broken. Here's 50% off to buy our next broken product. Like, what if mm -hmm. I don't want to? What if I'm tired of Madden? So, but hey, it's better than nothing. I guess we shouldn't complain too much because we're going to buy it anyway. Um, as far as the, and I will hold my props for when it's actually executed correctly, but for the EA commissioner tool, I'm with Dan. I want you, I want the commissioner to be able to reverse game scores. Um, just completely wipe a game and start it over as if it never happened. Uh, I would like to see, um, a little more customization, but overtime, uh, quarter limits would be nice. Uh, right now if you go to <laughs> overtime, you're basically the person who gets the ball can basically win the game or they can almost force a tie depending yeah. on how efficient they are with their offense. Uh, and there's no control we have over that. And a uh, number three, I would love this more than anything in the world. Let the commissioner set a free agency at random advance window. Let's say Prime says the advance, I'm going to set it in the game, advance between three Eastern and seven Eastern randomly. Prime doesn't know when it's going to happen and nobody else does. That way there's no sniping. Now the game's just going to randomly advance. And if you want to bid on a player, you're pushing your luck if you wait in between that window. I'd like to see that. Yeah, those are all good things, and I, I agree. I, I like the idea of being able to tweak some minor rules in the game, like quarter length, uh, maybe pauses, amount of pauses you can have. To me, I think outside of that stuff, 
that you listed, which was on my list, one the last thing I had was the ability to export rosters or even league files so we can have backups of our own. Um, yeah. Whether it's, hey, the dream would be every advance, I would be, be able to go in and just export the league file. And then if the league blipped, then I can somehow re-import it if the, league, if the server crashed or if the file was corrupt or somebody somehow nuked a big team or, or something, then we would have a backup there. Secondly would be rosters, obviously. If that was too much, then we could just export rosters however often we wanted. Guys could practice with their rosters, stuff like that. And I know this wouldn't be a commissioner tool, but just the ability to scrimmage guys in, in CFM. Just There's practice mode, but the ability to, I don't know if it would be to just play games against guys somehow or just in practice mode, you would you would take turns in like a scrimmage setting at, at the practice field and you could just scrimmage back and forth with real guys with their teams, stuff like that. Just I would think exporting rosters would be a good start, honestly. Just to, if there was a blip, it wouldn't be as big of a headache. I think that's what you're going to get. I think the commissioner tool is probably going to be directly related to preventing what just happened. Yeah. I think you're right on what you're going to get and we're daydreaming about the rest. Yeah. It's, but Hey, it's, it's a start and it's better than what we got. And I think that's all we can hope for. And honestly, there was a part of me that thought this could be the beginning of the end of CFM. And I'm probably more of an optimist than some, but knowing that, Hey, it's going to be here for one more year. And it looks like they're actually somewhat going to try something shows to me that they're not going to completely cancel CFM or just make a season mode or, or something. So I, I think I think that's good news for us, uh, for those who love to drive themselves insane. Um, yeah, I think I think that point there is what we just at least need to need to put our thoughts and focus on. Hey, uh, at least they they hear us and, and doing something. So yeah. I think that's good. So fourth down. Uh, we like to spread the love on total access. You know, a lot of times there's a lot of negativity in leagues and, and people like to talk down on each other. And, and for the last several episodes, we've done a spread the love segment here on total access. And Matt, who would you like to spread your love to? Yeah, I'm going to go north of the border here. I'm going to go with my buddy Finns, uh, five and two lead in the division. I think he's in a division that he could probably consistently win. Uh, Noel's also playing good football, so uh, and has a really good team, and in my opinion, the biggest glitch in Madden 24, which is Nick Chubb. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Fins is playing really good football. He's got wins over Field. Um, you know, he's got a win over Grams, who we just talked about, is actually playing really well. Um, so he's got he's got Noel next, so that's going to be a huge game this advance. But I'm happy for him. I know he really wanted that team after we blipped. Um, I think it gives him Joe Burrow, who you know. He, he was trying to trade too. I don't think he really clicked with him. You, everybody's going to click with someone like Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to give the love to every single one of you out there who does not blame Madden when you lose. Um, getting tired of it. Uh, we all drop picks. We all have fumbles. And uh, for those of you that give your opponent credit and don't blame Madden in the chat or in your tweets, I love you. <laughs> very good. Very good. I like that. Hey, I'm going to give my, uh, my love to someone that probably – probably a little bit low on it right now because their gameplay isn't in where they want it to be. In fact, uh, pretty discouraged, but DW man, uh, what a great guy he is. Uh, does a lot for the league behind the scenes, always trying to be uh, the first one in, in your corner or something's going wrong. And, and I know he's feeling kind of the, the blues right now because he hasn't won a game and just feeling lost. And Hey, just want to encourage you, man. You've been here before. Uh, you, you've had this moment before and you fought back, you figured some things out, you, you battled and, and were competitive. Uh, you're going to get this Jets team to where you need it to be. They got some of the pieces for you. Maybe not everything you need right now, but but keep doing it. Keep doing you. Keep blitzing. Keep running. Keep keep taking the the passes you see, and uh, you, you'll get back onto this one. And keep your head up, man. Keep fighting. Uh, I'm a believer, so uh, keep going, DW. For me, I got two people I'm spreading the love to. First being QP. Guys, I'm beaten. He's beaten the competition well. I know he's got a good team, um, but at the end of the day. It doesn't matter what team you got if you can't win. And uh, QP's winning, and that's that's all that matters. Uh, he's He's got the number one ranked scoring offense, the number two ranked scoring defense, and he's just playing good football. I think the blip helped him not only probably get a little bit better of a team, but also kind of reset mentally. So I'm happy to see Q uh, just kind of back to his normal form. And the other guy I'm going to spread the love to is Monty, you know, he was like he was like the little little brother coming up, trying to get noticed, trying to poke the big bro or the little little chihuahua coming up and trying to yip at the Dobermans. And, and he tried his best, man. He sure did, but he got 
he got put in timeout. You know, he got put in timeout uh, by by the goat, and uh, he's gonna learn that he probably shouldn't have said something because he's not gonna beat me for the rest of the cycle. But he he's he I, I like the confidence. Um, well, moving on now. Extra point time, Matt. I know last time you caused some controversy. What's your uh, what's your Matt five this time? Yeah, wait. Before he gives a Matt five, is this a, a Matt five on on where we are today, or what's going to happen in the future? Which one no, are we hold, looking hold, at, here, Matt? Hold on a second. So the Matt five last week caused a, caused you guys to start fighting. You guys are my family. It, it kind of made me sad. And, and I was <laughs> I've been getting a lot of spam calls from the Pittsburgh area, and and it, I, I just it, to me this is just a game, and I I think I'm going to step away from the top five ranking this week just to let things calm down I, I i don't i don't want these threats to continue so uh what i what i thought is last week in, in the nfl we saw a lot of big leads that evaporated obviously the jaguars beating the chargers and coming back was the biggest one and so i got to think it you know those chargers were probably talking smack there were people talking smack to the jags fans in our chat mm-hmm. and that backfired on them a little bit so i got to thinking what are the top five biggest sports backfires ever um, and I had to dig into the depths of my knowledge vault here, but number five, 2019, I don't have a date because this is not a confirmed statement, but it sounds real. Pat Beverly, basketball player, tells Stephen Curry, you had the last five years, the next five years are mine. Um, I don't think, I, I think people would probably, I, I bet you half this league doesn't know who Pat Beverly plays for. So <laughs> that, that's obviously a big one. Uh, number four, March 26, 2014, Swaggy P uh, turns around and celebrates celebrate the three-point <laughs> shot that misses uh if you just type swaggy p in your discord gif you will see that exact perfect. reaction perfect um june 9 2010 lebron james not one not two not three not four when the heat teamed up with when he teamed up with bosh yeah. and wade and he was talking about how many titles they were going to win they didn't win the six or i don't know i think he ended at six they didn't even get close to that um mm-hmm. number two uh this, this 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 one hurt me but january 4 2014 Matt Hasselbeck wins the overtime coin toss. <laughs> Seahawks versus yeah, Packers. He says, we want the ball and we're going to score. Goes out, throws a pick six. Uh, I'll never <laughs> forget that. And I don't think the sports world will either. Uh, and uh, January 7, 2023. Dan He 22 <laughs> in the Discord chat. Love you all. Needed to say that before I win every game the rest of the cycle. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, man. And, and then he loses. So that, that's my biggest sports backfire ever. Yeah. All right. Well played, Matt. Well played. That's uh, good. I like it. I, like it. I, would, I wasn't going to let you off the hook, Dan. You knew that. <laughs> and I, I, like, I told, like I told everyone Discord, it, it wasn't that Matt predicted it, right? It's, it's the good Lord humbling me. <laughs> and I, and I, I accept it because whenever he humbles me, Riches come on the other side, so I'm ready for it. You're I, good would, sport. I would like to throw in an honorable mention when Monty guaranteed a win against me. But other than that, perfect list, flawless list. I love it. Um, yeah, that's uh, SML Total Access, guys. I think this was a good episode. Um, if you guys liked it, make sure to comment or uh, let us know what you think uh, in, in the Discord chat or even the comments in this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and until next time, have a great day. <laughs>